An underground lake has been discovered on Mars, which means the search for life on the red planet just got a lot more interesting. Welcome back to Launchpad, I'm Christian Reddy, your friendly neighborhood astronomer, and if this is your first time visiting, make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new videos. We know that Mars once had water on its surface. It used to have oceans, and today we see dried up riverbeds, channels, lakes, and so on. And most of that water is still there, except it's frozen in the polar ice caps or frozen beneath the surface as permafrost. But liquid water on Mars is very hard to come by. That's because the atmospheric pressure is so low that water would just boil away and evaporate instantaneously. In 2015, NASA announced evidence for water running down the slopes of mountains and crater walls. However, it's been shown that those streaks can be created by clumps of sand running downhill. But this time, researchers announced an underground lake on Mars. And by lake, I'm not talking about a giant pond. I'm talking about a real, no kidding, 20 kilometer wide lake of water. The finding was announced by a team of researchers using the European Space Agency's Mars Express Orbiter. Mars Express has been analyzing the atmosphere, surface, and subsurface of Mars since 2005. They use the Mars Advanced Radar for Subsurface Sounding, or MARSIS. This instrument is designed to determine the structure of the subsurface down to a depth of a few kilometers. It does this by sending down low-frequency radar waves that penetrate a couple of kilometers below the surface. The returns from the radar build up a cross-section of the underground structure. In the South Polar region, radar returns indicated that the underground was mostly made up of volcanic rock. But then they came across a patch about 20 kilometers wide that was very flat and also very bright. These returns look just like the kinds that have been detected in places like Greenland, where water meets a layer of ice. The team wondered if these couldn't have been caused by something else, like maybe very pure water ice or perhaps frozen carbon dioxide ice. But after running the analysis and crunching the numbers, the team found that neither of these alternative explanations reproduced the data that they were getting. Their only conclusion then was water. In fact, this is not the first time Mars Express has detected water under this same region. Similar detections were made by another team in 2007, but they assumed it couldn't be water because the temperatures there run about 68 degrees below zero. Ah, but since then, we've learned quite a bit more about Mars. In particular, Mars has an abundance of a salty compound called perchlorates. Perchlorates are compounds of sodium, magnesium, and calcium, and depending on the exact compound, they can take the freezing point of water from zero degrees Celsius all the way down to minus 75 Celsius. So water could still be, well, water at those temperatures, albeit a very cold, briny, salty, yicky water that you would not exactly want to dip your toes into. At first glance, this lake is not the kind of place to raise a kid, even if your kid is a microbe. And that's because this lake is super cold and super salty. The concentrations of percolates alone render this lake deader than the Dead Sea. But it's possible that the water doesn't have to be quite that salty. Maybe there's some heat underneath the surface that can keep the water warm enough so that high concentrations of percolates aren't required and microbes could potentially thrive. Now, it would be great if we could land a probe there, drill and grab a sample of this lake water and stick it under a microscope. But there's a few problems with this approach. The first is that you'd have to drill through about a mile of solid rock and ice. That's hard enough to do here on Earth, let alone sending a probe to Mars to do it for us. Another problem is contamination. If the spacecraft has so much as a single microbial stowaway, that microbe could be detected in the data and then we won't have any way of knowing whether or not we've detected Martian or Earth life. A better approach would be to send future orbiters with more sophisticated instrumentation to better probe the surface. And while they're at it, they could even sniff the atmosphere above this particular lake to smell for, well, microbe farts. But if they found one lake under the polar region of Mars, there could be other lakes around the planet which would be easier for us to study. It's an intriguing thought and really starts to get us thinking more deeply about the possibilities of how life could potentially thrive on the planet. The whole idea that there's life on Mars is still speculation, but it's fun to speculate every once in a while and that's okay because speculation leads to hypotheses, hypotheses lead to experiments, experiments lead to knowledge. That is science in a nutshell. So how cool is that? 
We now have evidence of at least one lake on Mars, and there's reason to believe that there could be other lakes as well around the planet. And if we could find those lakes, maybe someday we can go fishing for life on Mars. So what do you think? Is there anything about Mars that you're particularly excited about? Let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to check them out. And if you'd like to learn more about Mars, I've got some more videos. I'll put a link to them here and some links to them in the description below. And if you'd like to join me on this journey through this amazing, wonderful universe of ours, well, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new videos. Until next time, I'm Christian Reddy and keep watching the skies. Welcome back to Launchpad. My name is Christian Reddy, your friendly neighborhood astronomer, and this is my shed. Well, <laughs> oh, jeez.